Abraham Lincoln. Of course Abe's got the best story, while Winston Churchill was staying in the Lincoln bedroom, he got out of the bathtub one night only to find the long-dead commander-in-chief staring at him. Churchill remarked, Good evening, Mr. President. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. Abe smirked and vanished, and all of us were like, LOL. Slay AI, Abe. Or maybe that's just me. Al Capone. Many people don't know that Al Capone, the most infamous Prohibition era gangster, was an avid banjo player. It's said that Capone's spirit still haunts his old cell at Alcatraz prison. A guard at the prison reported that during his shifts, he would often hear banjo music coming from Capone's former cell. Amy Winehouse In 2011, The Sun reported that Pete Doherty had fled to Paris after Amy Winehouse's ghost showed up at his London flat three or four times, perhaps to warn him of the dangers of hard living. The spookiest bit is that Doherty was supposedly clean during these visits. Anna Nicole Smith The Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino reportedly renovated the suite in which ANS was found and renumbered the rooms to foil nosy, interested in the paranormal customers. That could be why her ghost wanders the hallways now, trying to return to the scene of her death. Shudder Bonnie and Clyde like Bay and Jay but murderous and dead, Bonnie and Clyde are on the run again, reliving their glory days, tracking down their old stuff all over the U.S. Visitors to the site where the pair was gunned down in Louisiana have seen orbs in photos, as have those viewing their bullet-ridden Ford the 5th 8 on display in Nevada. Bonnie supposedly haunts the lobby of the Baker Hotel in Texas, so you know Clyde can't be far behind. Buddy Holly Buried in Lubbock Cemetery in Lubbock, Texas it is said at night you can see the ghost of Buddy aimlessly roaming around his grave site. Music has also been heard near his grave site in the late hours of the night. Bugsy Siegel One of the most colorful of Las Vegas underworld figures, Bugsy is often attributed to envisioning the sparkling city that Las Vegas is today. While there were a number of small gambling spots in Las Vegas, there was nothing like the Flamingo Hilton that Siegel opened in 1946. But, the Flamingo cost the mob millions to build and took much longer than they had anticipated. Sure that Bugsy was skimming from them, they had him killed in his girlfriend's mansion in Beverly Hills. On June 20, 1947, he was sitting in the living room when two shots came through the front window, hitting him in the head. Today, Siegel is known to haunt the mansion. Witnesses have reported seeing the apparition of a man running and ducking across the living room of the house, only to disappear as suddenly as he came. He also lurks about the Flamingo Hotel, appearing Natalie dressed in a smoking jacket with a wide smile on his handsome face. Most often, he is seen in the presidential suite at the hotel which was his home for many years. He has also been spied in and around the Rose Garden or in the Wedding Chapel area. Carol Lombard Carol Lombard was one of Hollywood's top comedy actresses in the 1930s. She married Clark Gable in 1939 and the pair were said to have one of Hollywood's ideal marriages. However, their love was cut short when Lombard was killed in a plane crash just three years later. Her spirit has been seen near the suite she shared with Clark Gable at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Both her and beloved husband, Gable, allegedly also haunt the Oatman Hotel in Oatman, Arizona, where they spent their honeymoon. Charlie Chaplin Charlie Chaplin's ghost in Musso and Frank Grill restaurant is one of the central tourist attractions in Hollywood. People wish to dine in Booth No. 1 because it used to be Charlie Chaplin's favorite booth. The restaurant provides a mix of leather booths, and includes some private and open booths. However, Booth No. 1 is not just famous for its window view, 
but it is said that Charlie Chaplin's ghost haunts this place and his spirit can be felt around. Some people claim to have photographed the ghost of Charlie Chaplin in the said booth. If you ever visit Hollywood and wish to dine at Booth No. 1, be ready to spend some extra hours waiting as it is one of the places every tourist wants to enjoy. Clark Gable One of the biggest box office stars during the 1930s and 40s, both Clark Gable and his wife, Carol Lombard are said to haunt the Oatman Hotel in Oatman, Arizona. After they married, in Kingman, they spent their honeymoon at the Oatman Hotel. Clifton Webb A popular star in the 1940s and 50s, Webb is best known for his portrayal of Mr. Belvedere in a series of films. He died of heart disease at the age of 76. During his life, he never married and shared his home with his mother until she died, who he said visited him nightly. He was known to tell his friends at this time, that he too would haunt the house after his death. True to his word, his ghost has been seen at parties, standing in the library uttering his favorite phrase well, well, well. A lifelong chain smoker, non-smokers have awakened in the house covered with ashes. He also is said to not like women sitting in his old armchair, which begins to bounce and make noise when a female sits in it. Webb has also been spied at the Abbey of the Psalms Mausoleum in the Hollywood Forever Memorial Park, where his body is interred. Elvis Presley According to the Houston Press, Elvis Presley's ghost has been reported all over the place. That makes a lot of sense, seeing as he was one of the biggest stars in modern history, or possibly even ever. Graceland is a good place to start if you are looking to run into Elvis Specter, the kitchen particularly has given off ghostly vibes to many visitors. On the Las Vegas Strip, he's been spotted by singers while on stage, just watching the performance from the crowd. The Knickerbocker Hotel is also a pretty regular site of reported Elvis hauntings, as he stayed there many a time. Room 1016 seems to be his focal point there. Errol Flynn Flynn was Hollywood's original bad boy. In the 1940s, he was famous for the lavish, decadent parties he threw at his estate in the Hollywood Hills. In 1959, Flynn's hard partying ways caught up to him and he died. For a while, there were no signs of paranormal activity in Flynn's old home. But in 1980, things started to get weird. The new owner's daughter reported all sorts of ghostly happenings. Could it have been Flynn still partying from beyond the grave? George Reeves The adventures of Superman actor's death was shrouded in mystery, as some believed that his alleged suicide was really a murder or accidental shooting. Reeves now supposedly haunts the Beverly Hills home where he died, though it's no surprise that such a gruesome death, he was found in his home with a single gunshot wound to the head, would result in eternal unrest. Groucho Marx The Laugh Factory The ghost of Groucho Marx frequents here. The owner has reported the smell of cigar smoke or a trail of cigar ashes manifesting despite no one being around. While the building was being replaced astered, Marx's face appeared in the plaster despite no one having a key to get inside. Marx's spirit also is said to move items around and play with the lights. Harpo Marx, it is said that Harpo Marx still haunts the Beverly Hills Hotel still making music after his death. Harry Houdini Renowned escape artist Harry Houdini could not escape death's clutches, and now he is apparently shackled to this mortal coil. He died from a ruptured appendix on October 31, 1926. What a day to go out! Houdini's ghost is said to haunt the premise of Jackie Gohan's Plaza Hotel in Las Vegas NV where a Houdini tribute magic show is still hosted. Many of the hotel's staff members believe that a ghost haunts the dressing rooms and makes its presence known by moving items around. 
and they believe that this ghost is none other than Houdini himself and that he's hanging around to make sure their magic show tribute is up to his standards. James Dean James Dean tragically died in a car accident at the young age of 24, but his ghost is said to haunt his grave in Indiana. Folks who have visited his tombstone have claimed that if you leave an unlit cigarette, you'll return to it lit with the scent of smoke in the air. Cold spots near his grave during hot summer days have also been reported, as well as visions of James hitchhiking at the site of his fatal crash, or even driving the car he was killed in. One particularly supernatural experience at the site of James' death was reported in detail by Supernatural magazine. Jane Mansfield Weird happenings occurred around the Pink Palace, Jane's former home in Beverly Hills. She had bought the house, a 40-room, Mediterranean-style mansion that had once belonged to singer Rudy Vallée, in November 1957. Jane had the house painted pink, with Cupid surrounded by pink fluorescent lights, pink furs in the bathrooms, a pink heart-shaped bathtub, and a fountain spurting pink champagne. Mickey Hargitay built her a heart-shaped swimming pool. Soon after Jane's death, Mickey was involved in a bad accident just after driving out of the gates of the Pink Palace. Matteo Ottaviano, Jane's third husband, was plagued with troubles. His father had a heart attack, legal problems closed his nightclub, and his best friend was killed. Victor Houston, a young man who worked as Jane's road manager and who was a constant visitor at the Pink Palace, died suddenly. Linda Mudrick was also involved in a terrible car accident. It got worse. Jane's son, Miklos, and a friend were playing in a toy electric car one afternoon at the Pink Palace and the little girl leaned back and somehow, her long black hair entangled around an axle. All of the hair on the back of her head was torn out by the roots. Had there really been a curse that surrounded Jane Mansfield, still working overtime? Others believed the Pink Palace was haunted. Bursting water pipes ruined many pieces of furniture and plumbers who came to repair the damage were allegedly frightened off by moving objects. One painter said that when he was working in Jane's old room, he felt that someone was watching him and several times he felt someone touch him on the shoulder. Eerie moaning sounds were often reported and servants refused to stay on. New ones were hired but often left after only a few days in the house. Even Linda Mudrick, Jane's longtime companion, finally quit, stating that, I never want to go in that house again. Many came to believe that Jane was still around, angry over the fighting that was going on over her estate. Her spirit, they said, wanted to ensure that her children received their inheritance. Unfortunately, the Pink Palace was sacked by Ottaviano, Jane's third husband, and his attorney. They locked out the children and Jane's parents and then sold the place. Jean Harlow The original blonde bombshell is said to still inhabit the Beverly Crest, California home where she allegedly suffered abuse at the hands of her husband, an MGM exec who later shot himself in their bedroom. One family who lived there in the 70s reported hearing heartbreaking sobs, smelling perfume, and hearing a woman whisper please help me. Jim Morrison Another member of the 27 Club and former lead singer of The Doors, died in a bathtub in Paris on July 3, 1971, from what is widely believed to have been a drug overdose. But his ghost traveled all the way from Paris to Los Angeles where he's been seen in the bathroom of Mexico restaurant Wybera, which was built where the Doors' preferred recording studio once was. His ghost was also apparently photographed near his grave in Paris, France in 1997. Joan Crawford The Brentwood, California house Mommy Dearest bought apparently came pre-haunted, according to her daughter Christina, and when Crawford herself died, snapping don't you dare ask God to help me, at a woman praying at her bedside. 
she joined the other malevolent spirits in starting fires and driving successive tenants to alcoholism and divorce. No more supernatural phenomena have been reported since an exorcism in the early 90s, that we know of. John Belushi Staying in Chateau Marmont in West Hollywood may give you a chance to see the ghost of comedian John Belushi. He died in the hotel due to drug overdose in 1982. His body was found in the hotel's bungalow 3 and since then many have reported strange sightings in the hotel. For instance, in 1999 a family checked into the hotel and moved into the bungalow 3. Their two-year-old son claimed to have met a funny man in the room. Out of curiosity the mother of the child started to check a list of celebrities that once stayed in the Chateau Marmont. As she was going through the list, the kid pointed to a picture of the late Belushi and claimed that that he was the funny man who visited him in the room. John Lennon John Lennon's ghost is peacefully haunting the Dakota, according to Yoko Ono, Paul McCartney and others who've been to the Manhattan building where the musician was murdered. Yoko has claimed to have seen him sitting at the piano in their apartment building, where he told her not to worry, because he's still with her. Paul, Ringo Starr, and George Harrison also caught inklings that their bandmate was still with them. While recording John's song, Free as a Bird, they all heard unexplainable noises and felt that their friend was there with them in the studio, just like old times. According to International Business Times, Paul claims to still write songs with John, in spirit. John Wayne John Wayne once owned a yacht named Wild Goose, and its successive owners have reported sightings of the actor aboard the ship. According to the LA Times, a psychic who was brought on board came to the conclusion that John wasn't there for any malevolent reasons, he just really liked his boat, so he hangs out on it whenever he can. He's been spotted in mirrors and in portholes, and he's been known to block doorways and rattle beer glasses. Sounds like John's having a good time spooking people here on Earth, if you ask me. Haunting Stories from Ghost Adventures Locations John, Ethel and Lionel Barrymore The Barrymore Estate The estate is rumored to be haunted by John, Ethel, and Lionel Barrymore. A cuckoo clock that John loved is said to have stopped running at exactly the same moment that John passed away. Also, the apparition of a man who was killed in a cable car accident on the property has been seen. Liberace Known for his incredible piano playing skills, along with his charisma and diamonds, Liberace died of AIDS in 1987. According to numerous reports, the entertainer's spirit has taken up residence at a restaurant called Carluccio's Tivoli Gardens. Liberace once owned the restaurant located just a few blocks off the Las Vegas Strip. Next to the dining room, Liberace had his own private lounge where he entertained close friends. From here, he was known to sometimes slip into the main dining room to tinkle the keys of the piano to the delight of unsuspecting diners. Today, staff and guests alike believe that the flamboyant pianist has never left, as there are numerous reports of electrical surges, bottles that tip over for no reason, and ladies' restroom stalls that lock and unlock themselves. On one occasion the electricity went off and would not come back on until someone realized it was Liberace's birthday. After they wished him a happy one, the lights inexplicably came back on. Some report seeing his spirit outside the windows. Lon Chaney the original Phantom of the Opera himself died in 1930, but the decades since have not stopped him from haunting the studio where the film was made, donning his cape and everything, according to reports. When the lights inexplicably go on and off by themselves, folks say it's Lon Chaney who's behind the strange phenomenon. Lucille Ball Ball was most memorably revered for her role the famous sitcom I Love Lucy, showing from 1951 to 1956. She is, arguably, still near and dear to the heart of the American public. And, as it seems, 
we are still dear to her. Reports of Lucille Ball ghost sightings began only a few years after her death. The first reported sighting of Lucille Ball occurred while a friend drove past the home. His anonymous report is that Lucille was standing inside the property, looking at him through the fence. She looked frustrated, likely because at the time, her home was in the process of demolition. While this was the first recorded of the occurrences, it certainly would not be the last. Ball's spectral activity is centered around the attic, according to the subsequent homeowners. Unidentified noises can be heard emanating from the attic. There are reports of sounds loud enough to be a party coming from upstairs. Voices are heard shouting, even when the attic is empty. Boxes and furniture are routinely moved, arranged differently than they were when the homeowners left them. There is even one instance of I Love Lucy's theme song drifting down into the house from the attic. There is some dissent among the reports of whether Lucille Ball has caused any damage to the home. While some say there has never been any, others claim that windows have been broken on the property with no explanation. The homeowner's belongings will disappear, only to reappear in places they shouldn't have been. She has also been known to frequent the old Desi Lu studios where people have reported smelling her floral perfume. Marilyn Monroe if you want to run into Marilyn, pick one or more of the following, 1. Make friends with the people who bought her gorgeous Brentwood home, 2. Hang out at the Cabana Room Suite No. 246 in the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel or the mirror in the lobby in which a guest once saw Marilyn's ghostly reflection, 3. Hold a seance at her crypt at Pierce Brothers Westwood Village Memorial Park. Mark Twain Popular American humorist, novelist, writer, and lecturer, Twain once lived in downtown New York at 14 West 10th Street, near 5th Avenue, between the years of 1900 and 1901. Today, his spirit allegedly haunts the building's stairwell. Mary Pickford the silent film actress Mary Pickford and her husband chose to live in the Pickfair estate and on several occasions, the couple witnessed the spirit of a female. When the duo got divorced, Pickford kept the estate. Later she married Charles Buddy Rogers and after she died, her husband reported being visited by a spirit he believed was Mary. Rogers sold the estate to Jerry Buss and the new occupant reported ghost sightings as well. In 1988, Piazzadora purchased the estate and in a controversial move, demolished the house in 1989 claiming that house is full of termites and that repairs would be useless. She later revealed that she and her kids were being haunted by a ghost of a lady. And this was the reason she had to demolish the house. Michael Jackson Locals say that Michael Jackson's ghost can be seen at Neverland Ranch, where the King of Pop lived for 15 years. The ghost has been haunting the places since he died in 2009. It is said that those who wanted to purchase the estate were warned about the ghost and many workers have also left the estate due to supernatural experiences. A worker by the name Marie Andre claims that Jackson's spirit was seen by many workers and it was obviously a scary experience for all of them. The main house sits on the grounds with a swimming pool, two lakes, a tennis, and a basketball court. Since Jackson's death, there have been many ghost sighting stories circulated by the locals. Montgomery Clift Elizabeth Taylor said that Montgomery Clift could have been the best actor on the planet if only he'd been less picky about his movies, though others would argue that that's what made him so great. A crippling car accident in 1956 forced him to get plastic surgery to mend his face. He never physically or emotionally recovered from that crash. He passed away a decade later and is said to haunt the room at the Roosevelt Hotel that he stayed in while filming From Here to Eternity. He's not a mean ghost, though he reportedly likes to give a scare by tapping folks on the shoulder, draining batteries, and practicing his bugle as he did while filming the movie. Orson Welles Apparently, the food in the afterlife isn't so great, 
because Wells, a notorious bone vivant, has been spotted enjoying a snifter of brandy at Sweet Lady Jane Bakery on Melrose Avenue. It's the site of a restaurant he used to frequent. Ozzy Nelson The adventures of Ozzy and Harriet star still wreaks havoc in his former home in the San Fernando Valley. Owners claim to hear Nelson run the faucet, open and shut doors, and make the lights flicker. A female tenant who claims to have felt the actor playfully move her sheets and kiss her on the neck reported the strangest sighting. A far cry from the wholesome family man we were used to seeing on television. Peck and Twistle As a promising actress, Peck and Twistle gained only moderate fame, but her ghost has become the stuff of Hollywood legend. On the night of September 18, 1932, Actress Peck and Twistle made her way up the steep slope of Mount Lee in Los Angeles to the site of the famous Hollywood sign, back then it spelled out Hollywood Land. She took off her coat and neatly folded it, put down her purse, and climbed up the maintenance ladder on the back of the 50-foot-high letter H. She stood atop it for a moment, looking over the lights of the glamorous city below, then leaped to her death. Peg probably died instantly, and her body was found the next day by a hiker. But that's not the last Peg and Twistle has been seen, not alive anyway. Her ghost has been sighted many times in the vicinity of famous Hollywood landmark, still wandering slowly in her melancholy. Here are some of the documented sightings of Peg's ghost, the Hollywood sign stands atop Mount Lee in Griffith Park, just west of the Los Angeles suburb of Glendale. Over the years, park rangers and have reported seeing a pretty blonde woman dressed in 1930s clothing wandering the park's paths. She is described as looking sad, and when she is approached, she vanishes. As a couple was walking their dog along the Beechwood Canyon trail of the park, their dog began to behave strangely, whimpering and cowering behind them. Suddenly, a woman in out-of-date clothing appeared on the trail in front of them, appearing dazed or confused. She vanished before their eyes. John Arbogast, a park ranger, claims to have seen Peg's ghost on several occasions. He says she most often appears late at night when conditions are foggy, and she is often accompanied by the strong scent of gardenias, said to be Peg's favorite fragrance. Devin Morgan, a resident of Beechwood Canyon, also can verify the gardenia connection. One afternoon she was taking an exercise hike up the trail near the sign. As she made her way around one of the switchbacks, she noticed the figure of a woman on another part of the trail. She looked very strange to me, Morgan said. She had a very etheric quality. Instead of walking, she seemed to almost glide. She wasn't floating. She didn't look like she was a ghost, but there was something very, very strange about her, and very soft looking. Morgan attempted to catch up with this woman, but she had vanished, and the only thing in her place was the intense scent of gardenias. Most recently, four friends encountered the ghost, a story that was featured on Sci Fi's Paranormal Witness. The friends, Tina, Alon, Brian, and Al, after a game at Dodger Stadium, decided to go touch the famous Hollywood sign. Although the area is off-limits to trespassers, they jumped the fence and headed up. On their way back down, Brian slipped and fell part way down the hill. As he began to make his way back toward the others, he saw someone on the path walking toward him. It was a woman wearing a dress similar to the style of the 1930s, according to the sci-fi story. She wore heels and a veil over her face. She walked effortlessly up the hill. Her footsteps made no sound. It was only later that they read about the story of Peg and Twistle. Red Fox the popular star of the long-running Sanford and Son television series has been known to haunt Stage 31 at Paramount Studios where he died of a heart attack. At the studio, people have heard him laughing at the jokes and claim he just kind of hangs around. 
More often, the comedian is known to haunt his former home in Las Vegas. After a terrible battle with the IRS, he lost the home when the IRS forced the sale. The new owner reportedly saw Fox's apparition walking around in a bathrobe. Other strange occurrences included lights that turned on and off by themselves and a sliding glass door constantly opening of its own accord. Today the building houses offices for Nevada Aqua Air Systems. Continuing to have trouble with the sliding door, they finally replaced it with a wooden swinging door. However, this didn't stop the door from opening with invisible hands. Rudolph Valentino Want to catch a glimpse of Hollywood's original Playboy? You have to hit the sack. How many girls didn't hear that when he was alive? Valentino is known to lounge around his former bedroom, and in bed at what used to be his beach house in Santa Monica. Some have also spotted the actor at Studio 5 at Paramount as well as at his final resting place, Hollywood Forever Memorial Park. There's also rumors of a cursed ring and sightings of his long-gone dog roaming Hollywood's pet cemetery. Selena Kenten Nia The legend of Selena's ghost begins shortly after she was buried at Seaside Memorial Park, less than a block from the ocean, along Ocean View Boulevard. In Corpus Christi, TX. People who come by the thousands to view her grave have reported hearing her singing just as the sun sets on hot, quiet summer nights. People have reported seeing her walking on Corpus Christi Beach along the seawall, near the Tea Heads and the Holiday Inn. Sharon Tate Tate was mercilessly tortured, stabbed 16 times in the back and chest, slowly. She begged the murderers to spare the life of her unborn child, but she was told repeatedly that they did not care for her or her baby. Leaving her to die, they scrawled the word pig across the front door in her blood. There was one survivor William Garretson, the caretaker himself, whose friend was murdered leaving the property. He failed to hear the screams because of the loud music he was listening to at the time, and thankfully was spared the fate the others suffered. He was a suspect at first, and arrested for questioning, but was released. He had met with his murdered friend only minutes before the murder, to discuss the sale of the very radio he was listening to at the time. The home still stands today, and is only 150 feet from a house that experiences heavy paranormal activity. This is known as the Oman House, named for its owner, and he reports that even back when the house was just being built and brand new, workmen would report strange things happening, like unexplainable heavy footsteps. This was long before the murders, and therefore had nothing to do with the events. But there is a plethora of other activity within the home things falling off shelves, especially the fish tank, which apparently has been proven not to move or shake easily. Lights flicker on and off, voices are heard, people are pushed on the stairs, and the owner claims to have tracked a paranormal vortex around the property throughout the years. It is not a solid theory that these events are caused in any way by the murders, but it is an unsettling coincidence, and one wonders if perhaps with the Manson family's obsession with the occult, they may have targeted the area specifically. Perhaps, with continued investigation, new evidence will be uncovered. Thelma Todd Between 1926 and 1935, Thelma Todd starred in about 120 films, including many with the Marx Brothers. At the height of her fame, she opened up her very own restaurant and lived in a fancy apartment above it. She was found dead from carbon monoxide poisoning in her car at the young age of 29. It was concluded that the death was accidental, but suspicion still arose. The building is now owned by a production company, and employees have reported seeing a ghostly figure gracefully descending the stairs. Perhaps her untimely, slightly suspicious death has left her wanting for more in this world. Tupac Shakur Despite dying young and having only a short career in the music industry, 
Tupac Shakur is considered one of the most influential artists of the hip-hop industry. He was born as Lesane Parish Crooks in East Harlem, New York, on June 16, 1971. He began his career as a rapper in 1987 as a teen. He released many hit singles and also appeared in films during his short-lived career in entertainment. On September 7, 1996, the young rapper was shot in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas. He died six days later on September 13, 1996, from his injuries. Much speculation followed his death in relation to who was responsible for the shooting. It was rap artist Kendrick Lamar that has claimed that Tupac Shakur is now a ghost. The rapper says that he was visited by Shakur while he was asleep and that he told him to carry on doing what he was doing and not to let Tupac's music die. Victor Killian Killian was a character actor who worked virtually uninterrupted for nearly 50 years. In 1979, at the age of 88, he was killed in an apparent robbery in his apartment located a 10-minute walk away from the Chinese. Since then, Killian has reputedly roamed the grounds of the theater looking for the culprit in his as-yet-unsolved murder. Virginia Rap It's not surprising to hear reports that her spirit still lingers behind. Visitors who come to Hollywood Forever Cemetery have reported hearing a ghostly voice that weeps and cries out near Virginia's simple grave. It is believed by many to be her ghost, still attached to this world, and still in anguish over her promising career, which was, like her life, cut short before it could really begin. Walt Disney It is said that Walt Disney himself haunts the park. He kept an apartment over the fire station on Main Street, where he and his family would stay to enjoy the park, or where Walt himself would go to get some work done. Patrons would often see a light in the window, meaning Walt was working at his desk. After his death in 1966, the apartment remained empty, but employees still went up to dust it. One night, a woman went up, did her usual cleaning routine, shut off the desk lamp, and went downstairs. On Main Street, she noticed the light was still on. Thinking she had forgotten to turn it off, she went back to the apartment, shut off the light, and came back downstairs. Again, she looked back and saw the light was on. Thinking there was a short in the lamp, she went back into the apartment, unplugged the lamp, and left. Down on Main Street, she looked up again and saw the light blink on, and the drapes pull back, as if someone was looking down at her. The light remains on every night, to remind people that Walt's spirit lives on in the park. Whitney Houston Whitney Houston was born in New Jersey on August 9, 1963. This talented singer and actress became one of the most celebrated performers of the 1980s and 1990s. Selling over 200 million records worldwide, she is one of the best-selling music artists of all time. She was married to Bobby Brown from 1992 to 2007 and they had one daughter together. Their relationship was always troubled and he was widely blamed for her drug addictions. Houston died on February 11, 2012. She was found in her room at the Beverly Hilton in California. Her cause of death was accidental drowning with cocaine use and heart disease listed as contributing factors. During an interview with Oprah Winfrey, Houston's daughter, Bobby Christina, claimed that she was haunted by her mother at her Atlanta mansion.